With the year gradually coming to an end, it is time for social interactions, especially in the workplace. The Lagos State Government is ensuring all departments and agencies are all in a competitive mood with the 21st edition of the Head of Service Games. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of This is Lagos. No space. No space for police brutality and stars. Following the shootings at the Lekki toll gate, Nigeria erupted in a series of reactions on the morning of October 21, 2020. Shops of defenseless Nigerians were looted, public and private properties destroyed, with a heavy blow on the Lagos transport sector. A scary monument is the site of burnt mass transit buses at Oingbo in Lagos State. Once upon a time, the buses provided huge relief to individuals across the state. One year after, the Oingbo bus terminal is yet to recover from that urge of violence. Stanley recollects the events. He says some familiar faces in the terminal may have lost their livelihood as they no longer resume for duties. And during those period, I wasn't around. I traveled. So on, on the process, I came back. I saw the burning and other things. My brother is so bad, very bad. But we thank God with everything uh, they are coping. So we too we are coping. We don't have any disturbance here again. Those ones that used to work here, they are not here again. You no, know, they will after the incident, they will have to run for their life. They will change to so the new faces. We have the new faces here now. So we are working with the new faces, but they are little. At least before, if it is before, we have almost like 100 bus, more than. But now they only have like four buses, uh, special like three cars working now. So I hope they are coming up little by little. So by his grace, I know they will come up. Mrs. Josephine and Mr. Okoro own shops here. They bore witness to the chaotic scenes the morning after the shooting as they scampered for safety when the misguided Nigerians overpowered the security operatives and went on a looting spree. After the incident at Lekki, so we came to open the shop, but the people around, I would say the police and the boys, they were having a tug on. So from there, it, I think it just it was something of like five, six minutes, everywhere was somehow. So it was very devastating. How did you escape the incident? I wouldn't say I escaped it because I was still at Oyunguti the next day. I was actually on at that building close to First Bank. That was where I hid till the next day. So it was not a total escape. So you stayed? I stayed because I couldn't go home. I was called from home that the one at home is happening. I was called from Mijora to because I stayed at Orile. I was called from Mijora to that at Mijora it was happening also. So I just couldn't go home on that day. Was your shop affected? Very, very. Well, very, very. I'm actually working on that person. I will have like three shops here in Oyungo. Two out of the three shops were totally vandalized. The one close to UBA. If you notice, there is a building close to UBA. The building is not functioning up to now. That's our shop. So that one was totally vandalized. This one was vandalized, but not as the way that one was. Up to now, that one we've not even we did not even look into it because the vandalism of that one was was on a different height entirely. I think there is something done to some that were affected, but not all. Because I have a testimonial somewhere close to that the other shop too. He was able to testify that LSETF, if I'm not mistaken. LSETF were able to give him some amount because him too was he did on electronics and him too was he was totally like when you say totally the whole shops under that building was was vandalized throughout so there was no but him was able to tell us that the government did this they did that it's not good for me it's bad for me because what we are selling here is food before but now it's not food small time we run they born many places, they born everywhere. Here we just managing now, surviving with God, because with God all things are possible. You said you were selling food here, We are selling frames, frames items. Mm. Yeah, yes, but now we don't have anything to sell. We just what managing. To all the frames you were selling. Ah, the time they born the plaza, when we are running, many of them broke, so all of them destroyed. Even though we are hiding, we hide inside, inside another railway, because when they see you, they will kill you. So now, as we come out, we don't see anything again, we begin to manage. Did they, did they enter your shop? Ah, 
that day, that day was terrible because the market was outside, sun was here. When they came, what happened is this, that we run away, we leave the door open and everything, before we come out, many things have destroyed. Little wonder how many Nigerians mobilized against marking the anniversary with another protest. They fear it could again be hijacked. On that first day, I'm on duty. It happens around 11.30 in the morning. When they said all the people that are protesting should leave the place. Unfortunately, the person that was coming behind me just hit me with his knife. I was on uniform. And before I could understand what is going on, I was rushed down to police hospital at Fallon. Was it one of the protesters that hit you with the knife, that stabbed you all? Uh, was this person in uniform or how? The person is not on uniform. I think they are the protesters mm -hmm. who are protesting. They are marking their one year anniversary. Where was this stop? Where? Which? This is where they stabbed me. Okay, the place, I mean the venue, where you are stopped? I was stabbed in front of that toll gate. On the 20th of, the, of uh, October, so they bring her brother, we see that he was in danger or something, but they have treated him. And all their workers, they are always doing good to us. But we need the assistance of the government to come and assist him and rescue him his life. That's just, how is this? How is he responding to something? Him? Mm. Uh, that day he was serious something. He was serious. He did not pick up. It's about three days ago now he was picking up school. He didn't talk very well in that time. And so while it's been a year since the NSAS protests since 2020, the scars are still fresh in this area and of course many others affected in the aftermath of the protest. And so the question is, why would anyone want to repeat of the actions that took place in that particular period? It is left for the government, the people and of course the law enforcement agencies to learn from the crisis that followed and take appropriate actions to resolve the conflicts amicably. Gathered here are representatives of housing and development from both the federal government and all state appointees and ministries. The Minister for Works and Housing stresses the relationship between affordable housing and poverty, including its implications to the economy of a state and country. The Federal Housing Authority and the Federal Mortgage Bank are intervening as federal agencies in respect of housing development directly through cooperative societies and the provision of development of loan, development loans and mortgages. But all these account for only a small amount of the need across the nation. For many reasons, not excluding the limited amount of land available at these federal agencies. And the point being made here is that we must all come together, the 36 states, the FCT, and federal government, to really unleash the powers and the possibilities for prosperity that lie in housing inclusion and so these are the reasons why i seek to persuade all members of this council to go back to our states to go and persuade our governments to recommit to housing development and i said purposely recommit i say this because i am aware that several states are doing something or the other but what we need now is scale a massive rollout across Nigeria. The increased tempo of positive activities in this sector since the inception of this administration two years ago is remarkable. The outcome in, term, in terms of housing products and urban rejuvenation have brought a smile to the faces of many. I stand here today to salute his tenacity and determination. Evidently, Mr. Governor is producing an enduring legacy of great result through the detailed implementation of the team's agenda in Lagos State. Our suggestion should be those that will yield enduring, enduring and sustainable results, innovative and proactive solutions based on best practices should be our ultimate goals. The exercise should not end here. 
let all go in the spirit of the meeting to use all the new ideas. I know that there may be the need to domesticate some of these policies. Let's be bold in achieving a change because the future is based on our present actions. The governor on his part is seeking the cooperation of the federal government to review policies and laws guarding federal government lands and properties in the state. Some of the recommendations that will be coming out um, of the, the discussions here would help us um, to strategically have interventions that would look at um, urban renewal reforms, digitalization of processes, initiation of slum to city project, promoting ease of processing land documentation. And I think the minister have also mentioned some of these things. You know, it means that we're all thinking the same way. And we believe that we'll be able to institutionalize um, a process of adequate monitoring of estate agents. Like I did mention earlier, in Lagos especially, we need to do that. We need to set up a new agency called La Serrera. La Serrera is meant to be registering um, um, estate agents, you know, because in Lagos you have over 20,000 of them and we really don't know what they're doing. But we'll bring the, all of them into a platform where we can indeed safeguard, you know, um, very hard, you know, developers or landlords. It is expected that the proposed review of the policy by the Federal Considered Committee will avail the states the opportunity to work closely with it to identify the issues bordering on urban development challenges that faces the state. The establishment of a National Urban and Regional Planning Commission to serve as a national umbrella for the initiation and formulation of national policies as well as the preparation of operative development plan for the nation. We believe in collaboration with the state for the federal government as stipulated, I'm told, in the National Urban and Regional Planning Act, um, 1992, number 88. We believe a special urban planning status for Lagos to engender consideration for special support in the focal area not limited to infrastructure development, urban regeneration, massive social housing, integrated transport system in view of the state's population density, the dynamics, the indices and the influx. This status has implication for the sustainability of the state as a commercial nerve center and a financial hub, not only for Nigeria, but for the whole of West Africa. Commissioners gathered say there is a need to eliminate delays in building permits and protect landowners from land grabbing. Housing estates are being developed in Nigeria. We only need to cater for the cities that are yearning for uh, housing schemes like Lagos, Port Harcourt, and the capitals in the country. The purchasing power of some states are so low, though you need to give them low income accessible housing. In the places like Abuja, we need to cater for the low income people. Housing has always been a basic requirement for human survival right from uh, creation. So as society evolves and the population increases, there is a need for innovation. And that is why we are pursuing housing that will create, uh, reduce the urban slums that are gradually taking over urban areas and also to create a shelter for all in spite of uh, the population. And that is why the experiments with uh, indigenous uh, housing uh, the, uh, the concepts is also very important at this point. The availability of affordable housing is critical if Nigeria is to improve the standard of living of its residents. The women have definitely been dominating the headlines in recent weeks, and a council of wives of Lagos state officials are ensuring that the 21st edition of the Women's Conference here in Lagos is a special one. The First Lady of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, First Ladies of all states of the Federation, and other dignitaries past and present are gathered for this Women's Conference in Lagos. <laughs> Women leaders present drum on the need for dialogue such as this in order to strategize for the women folk in the face of the nation's challenges. This conference is a platform for women not just in Lagos but from all over the country and beyond our shores to come together to share experiences and insights on modern day issues affecting women 
men, children, youths, the home front, and the society in general. This annual conference is one of the major initiatives of council to make a significant positive difference in society, especially in terms of creating convergence and the avenue for women to unlearn, learn, and relearn in order to align with modern realities and also prepare them ahead of challenges of life. You will agree with me that with the recent spreads of kidnapping, terrorism, banditry, and other forms of violence, a convergence of this sort aimed at the future preparedness of our women is most desired. Therefore, I again warmly welcome all dignitaries who have honored us with this, their esteemed presence at this year's conference, which promises to be impactful and thought-provoking. Dear women, it's time to assert ourselves and contribute positively to our society. Don't be laid back. No matter where you find yourselves, always remember that you have something to bring to the table. We all have a role to play, whether you're a grandma, or a career woman, or a housewife, or an entrepreneur, or a student, or a farmer. The very essence of this year's conference is encapsulated in the Chinese proverb, when sleeping women wake, mountains will move. Women, now is the time to move mountains. On this note, I say, awake, and welcome to Lagos. This is Lagos. This conference is unique because Lagos State has set a pace for women and particularly wives of government officials and other leaders in authority. I commend the wives of Lagos State officials for this great initiative, both the present, both the past and the present first ladies of Lagos State for sustaining the tempo of this great forum. This conference surely demonstrates how powerful Lagos women have been in their drive to lead and in supporting their husbands to succeed. The voice of women in supporting the family and in decision making both at home and in government is eminent and evident today. I'm therefore confident that the intellectual discourse resulting from this conference will positively impact on the lives of Lagosians and Nigeria in general. Therefore, I encourage First Ladies to adopt this conference as inspirational and exemplary. Governor of the whole state, Babajide Songulu, hops on the influence of women in his administration and their pivotal role in ensuring the state overcame the ravaging COVID-19 pandemic and its after effects. We believe that the organizers and all of you have chosen a right topic. It directs our conscience and there's an urgent need for us to brace up to the new and emerging reality of the 21st century. To be awake is to be in tune Understanding, like I said, all of the challenges that we all faced last year, but to come out of it and in 2021 to be well out of the pandemic and to be well out of the fact that nothing that we do, we may now, that we can do well without our women or without our female full beside us. And so the charge out here today is to look at the changes and the emerging realities of our time. And I believe the word awake is not only apt, it's not only appropriate, it's for you to be a lot more resilient, to be aware of your environment, to have a new approach to doing things, to ensure that you have an integral and a sustainable mindset at everything that you find your hands to do as individuals, as organization, as corporate entity. I think it's important for us to know that all of you working collaboratively as partners with government, we can achieve a lot together working in unity. With several key topics lined up for the conference, the women have assured to release a communique to present their resolutions to the public.
Women in governance from Lagos and across the country have been in Lagos for three days celebrating on issues that affect the woman folk and indeed the Nigerian state as a whole. Can we put our hands together for them this time? Thank you very much. It comes to a close with a seven-point communique on resolutions from the women to address some of their challenges confronting the nation. During the conference, the following observations were made. The consequences of work-life imbalance are dire to the individuals and the society, sometimes resulting into substance abuse, problems with parenting and supervision, higher rates of absenteeism, reduced productivity, decreased job satisfaction, raising health care costs, escalating rates of juvenile delinquency and violence. The failure of a family system aids the derailment of future leaders from embarking upon a fruitful journey to a greatly rewarding life on the long term. Three, that there isn't enough awareness to the fact that certain cancer types are preventable only if detected early enough. Four, many micro and medium, small and medium enterprises are still not aware of the importance of record keeping and expenditure prioritization to their businesses and even their individual lives. Five, women are resourceful. And while at it sometimes, we lose focus of our why. Six, national development is incomplete without women leadership, which in its most minute form starts from the home. Seven, COVID-19 came, hit hard, and created a huge vacuum in all spheres of our lives and endeavors, which we are still grappling with even today. Eight, there are still not enough women in the political space or at the helms of affairs, even though women are blessed with the power to transform and recreate anything they are a part of. There are several inhibiting factors, which include lack of support and equal opportunities, denial of education of the girl child, gender-based violence, and more. Seven, that as women, we should rebrand and care for ourselves, possessing strength, perseverance, and humility as qualities. We should support and encourage the aspiration and leadership of fellow women. The national and state assemblies should pass gen gender equality legislations that will guarantee quick and effective justice for crimes and violence against women, enable women leadership and empowerment trainings, access to education and medical treatment for physically and mentally challenged women, and create an enabling environment for women to participate in politics. The First Lady of Lagos State, Dr. Ibijoke Sonolu, is convinced women have a role to play in addressing the social vices that have plagued the nation. The deliberation at this conference have been directed at positively changing the narrative about the issues of women empowerment and equal opportunity to compete with the, con with the conclusion that women must be accorded our rights of place in leadership positions. It has also been established that women must inspire one another, lift one another up, and speak with one voice towards taking our place in the schemes of affairs. Not only that, apart from being a mentor to a mentee, we should also sponsor these ideas too. With the quality of the sessions at this conference, I have no doubt that the positive impact of the mind-shifting pieces of training will soon be felt across all strata of our society. I cannot quantify the appreciation of our council members to the governor of the Lagos State, my dear brother, Mr. Babaji de Ulusora, Mr. Ulu, and the deputy governor, my darling husband, Dr. Kadri Obafemi Hamzat, for your invaluable support, especially advisory and ideas for the growth and development of council programs and initiatives. As we always tell ourselves at political rallies in Edo State, you train a woman, you train a nation. So we shall continue to train our women. We thank you so much for thinking us fit to come here. I commend the First Lady for everything she has done. And I noted that in her speech, Her Excellency spoke about spending the 
funds that were raised in the course of this program to, for one purpose or the other, at the end of every program. That again is quite common. I'm indeed glad and excited with the quality of the discussants, the quality of the panelists that you've all put together, and the quality of the conversation that have been drawn at the end of this conference. As you draw the cutting, I want to state, I want to reinstate that the commendations and the recommendations that will be coming out of this conference, we will take them very, very seriously. We will look forward to implementation of all the reg reg recommendations and the suggestions that you plan out, you know, for us in this conference. The governor highlights the role of women in his administration and the need to continue furthering their cause. He also speaks on the state's vaccination drive and a new initiative to reach 4 million residents before the end of 2021. We, have, we are out of the third wave. But if we are not careful, the simulation shows that we can have a fourth wave in December. And why is it a concern? In December, we usually have huge traffic of travelers. Lagos continues to remain the hub of international travel, continue to remain the hub of inland waterway travels, the ports and everything are here, and Lagos continues to remain the hub of even border as in land border. So Lagos carries the air, the sea, and land border. So Lagos should not sit back and just fold his arms and not do anything. And so we were launched yesterday a project for us to be able to vaccinate 4 million Lagosians before December 25th. And so we've called it Count Me In. And I want to appeal to all of you that have not taken the vaccine, that from Monday, the vaccine will be, will be available in over 800 locations. Right now, it's just in about 100 locations. By Monday, we're pushing it into private hospitals, into all primary health centers, into all public hospitals, so that everybody can have access to have their job. The complaint before that we did not have the vaccine. Now your governor has gotten the vaccine. Bring your arm, bring your palm. We have the jab now, we need your palm to put the jab. And I can assure you that it is safe. After three days of deliberations and of course celebrations from the Council of Wives of Lagos State officials, it is hoped that the communique from this event is put into action. And this is by ensuring that women are more influential participants in the politics and, of course, leadership of Lagos and Nigeria. That completes our episode for this week. Until next time, I am Will Sinamoni, and this is Lagos. <laughs>